Hi everybody, so today I'm going to be doing another Arteza review video. Um, my other one did go up yesterday and that was for the 24 set uh, gouache. 24 gouache set? 24 color gouache set? Um, they did send me two products, so they sent me that and then they also sent me the 24 set of real brush pens. So um, that is what this video is going to be on today. Um, they did send this to me, but this video is not sponsored, so all opinions are my own. Um, there's nothing specific that they asked me to say, so I'm just going to give it to you straight. Um, so there are 24 colors in here, and they are all listed on the back. So there is Fair Skin, Lemon Yellow, Orange Rust, Orange Red, Neon Pink, Bubblegum Pink, Grape Purple, Wisteria Purple, Royal Blue, Sapphire Blue, Bright Blue, ooh, lots of blues, uh, Turtle Green, Seaweed Green, Light Green, Crocodile Green, Green Tea, Tawny, Chocolate, Coffee, Elephant Gray, Dolphin Gray, Smoke Gray, and Noir, which is black. Ooh, it's popping open. Alright, so I am going to be doing a swatch of all of these for you, and um, these are blendable and water-based ink brush pens. Uh, so I'll be doing, like I said, a swatch of all the colors and then a demo on how they blend. And then I will be doing a little bit of a, like an actual, like using them on something demo. It'll make more sense when you watch. Anyway, um, if you would like to hear my opinions on these brushes and learn a little bit more about them, then go ahead and keep watching. So the first thing I'm going to do here is some swatches, or are some swatches. Um, and while you watch that, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of information on the actual product as far as pricing and what the Arteza website um, says on the actual product listing. So these are the um, watercolor real brush pens. This is the set of 24. Um, now it says real brush pen set of 24 unique colors for sketching, drawing, and calligraphy. Water-based ink for watercolor effects. Flexible nylon brush tip for fine, medium, and bold strokes. Non-toxic meets ASTM standards. I don't know what that is, but non-toxic is good. Safe for children with supervision. Uh, it also says, Arteza Real Brush Pens set of 24 includes high quality, vibrant colors for sketching, drawing, and calligraphy from soft and thin to thick and lush. You can make fine, medium, and bold strokes of color with the flexible nylon brush tip. The water-based ink for stunning watercolor effects. It is non-toxic and meets ASTM safety standards. Uh, it has three reviews currently. They are all five star. Uh, the current um, price on these brush pens um, is $25.99, but that is a sale price. They're currently on sale. It looks like a, like pretty much everything on their site is on sale right now. Um, yeah. Looks like most things are. The regular list price, though, um, is $86.63. And I'm going to tell you a little bit later how I feel about the regular sale price and the um, the actual, like, regular price and then the sale price. Okay, that didn't make sense. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about that later. Uh, right now, I am just doing some swatches, so... Um, what was I going to say? I'm just using a brush, well, a water brush pen. I, my, my brain is like completely just not working right now. Um, so as you can see, the first row um, swatched out really well. The colors blended out really smoothly. You can't hardly see um, where I actually drew the original strokes. As I get into some of the blues and the greens, um, they start to stain the page a little bit. And this brown does it a little bit here, but I managed to kind of get it to fade out. Um, but the blues and the greens and then the grays, I think the grays were the worst offender of staining the page. Um, 
but and I thought that it had been so noticeable because maybe the ink had been sitting there for longer and that's just not like not gonna work out like you have to use water on it pretty immediately so I did go ahead and swatch those again and I'm trying to blend them out um, in the end when they dried it's definitely less noticeable but it is still noticeable I feel like it's more noticeable when it's wet but the yeah being able to see where you put the original strokes um, definitely more notice most noticeable on the grays and then uh, in the greens I would say is the next noticeable the other ones are really not too bad um, I went ahead and tested that um, darker green again just to see if I could um, smooth out the effect of the staining a little bit and that did work for the most part now I'm going to go ahead and start like just testing them with some rough sketches um, after this I will go ahead and show you a like actual um, like larger sketch instead of just like scribbling everywhere um, in real time right now I kind of just wanted to test out how they worked in some different techniques and stuff um, so one thing I did notice about these brush pens is that the more pigment you put down the smoother they blend out see how I'm just putting down some like quick little thin sketch marks um, and they're not blending out completely um, I'm not really sure why that is but definitely the more pigment you put down the um, like more saturated and um, like juicy the pigment is on the page the easier it blends out right now I'm just blending two colors together to see how um, they interact and then I used a water brush over it to blend them out um, the colors actually blend really really well when you're just using the markers and um, as you can see when I use the brush pen they're actually blending out really well because I used a lot of pigment on the paper um, I'll do a little bit more explaining about some of the characteristics of the paint or the the brushes um, when I show you the actual um, painting that I did but when you put like as you can see here I put um, multiple colors on top like layered them together before putting any water on and you can get some really nice blending and custom colors that way there's a drop of water on my paper that I just kind of <laughs> let sit there for the longest time um, and I'm just trying to see how they layer the leaf is still a little bit wet but I wanted to see what kind of um, feathering textures you could get with them and it actually looks really nice I kind of wish I had just left it but since I was just testing it I wasn't trying to make any of these look pretty then it's, it's totally fine and then you can actually get some really cool like shadow effects as you can see I did with the stem if you just take your um, brush with some water and like lightly graze one of the edges and kind of pull down the smallest amount of pigment you can kind of get a really cool shadow effect here I'm just um, putting some strokes on top of a little swatch that was already dried and then I'm going to blend these out like I said I'm just trying to test out how they interact with each other and different ways that I can use them how they're most effective and I um, tried not to um, blend them out like on that flower completely because I wanted to still be able to see the structure a little bit here I'm test like I tested it out in my bullet journal and um, I'll tell you a little bit more about how that turned out uh, at the end but I am kind of just going through continuing to add layers see how they work together and I'm actually doing these on the back side of the paper that I did the swatches on so I'm trying to see if the swatches on the back um, reactivated at all now um, these the pigment on the paper does reactivate but there's a limit to it um, but I'm just showing you here another example 
of how the paint blends out. You can see the top leaf is blending out much better because there was a lot more pigment. The bottom leaf, you can kind of still see like the initial, um, when I initially put water on it, you can kind of still see the outline a little bit. So that is pretty much the end of this portion, I believe. Just showing you my bullet journal again. And then I am going to go ahead and get into the um, the real time talk through portion and I will do a little bit more explaining on how these brush pens worked out for me. <clears throat> All right, so I know that in the um, sped up portion of this video, I said a lot that I would do a little bit more explaining once I got to the talk through portion, and um, that was mostly because I have a lot to say about this product, and um, the sped up portion was just not long enough for me to feel comfortable getting too in depth, uh, and then having to get like cut off or rush, and it just felt weird, so I wanted to do it in this portion mostly. Um, so this is actually the second time I'm filming this portion. The first time this like talk through outro portion ended up being like 30 minutes long and I was just rambling and I repeated myself like a bazillion times, but this time I have a list and I am prepared. So uh, this is a little super quick painting sketch thing that I did uh, to further test out these um, brush pens and try and see how they performed in a more like actually using them to create a piece situation instead of just doing random shapes and blobs. <laughs> so the first thing I do want to talk about are the brush tips. Now, um, n neither one of these two things that I'm going to mention are necessarily negatives in my mind. I just think that if these are a product that you're interested in purchasing, they're just something to keep in mind. Um, there were, I would say, probably about four or five of the brushes that um, when you open them up and you go to, um, to draw on your page or do whatever you're doing, um, they had one single fiber um, coming out of the very tip of the marker and I didn't actually see it um, at first and I didn't realize it was there until I started using it and there was like this little tiny line that was dragging along everywhere. Um, that's not really a big deal. None of the ones on mine were actually attached to the brush. They were just like a little straggler that got stuck in there so you can just pull on it and it should pop right off. If for some reason yours is attached and it won't come off just with like light tugging, uh, you can just go ahead and snip it with some scissors, but I would be very careful so that you don't um, destroy the tip of the marker. Uh, another thing that I do want to mention is um, that the brush tips themselves are actually kind of inconsistent throughout the different brushes and I will show you a few just so you can see what I mean. So, let's see if you can tell. So this brown one right here is actually quite a bit shorter and m noticeably thinner than a lot of the other brushes and this gray one right here is actually noticeably shorter than the black one. See if I can show it to you lined up. So it is noticeably shorter. So some of them are a little thicker and some of them are a little shorter. Um, I didn't actually find that it made a difference in the actual application of the markers. I didn't think that it made a difference really. It's just if, I don't know, if that's something that you care about or whatever, it's just something to keep in mind. Um, now that said, 
Um, all of these brush pens uh, on their listing, which I believe I read in the sped through portion, uh, it says that they have a fine tip and are great for a variety of uses and I definitely agree every single one of these brushes with the exception of the black have a very fine tip the black is still a fine tip it's just not on mine at least and I have a feeling that this is probably um, because there there are so many differences in the brush tips there's probably a little bit of variation in each set so definitely still a fine tip, but not as fine, not like razor sharp as the other ones. But again, not really a big deal to me. Um, I don't really plan on using these for any like super crazy detailed work. So to me, it's not a big deal. Just something to keep in mind. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is um, the blending capabilities of these brush pens. Now, most of what I have to say about the blending ability of these brush pens kind of comes off a little bit negative, but again, for the sake of this video, I felt that it was important to tell you what I found just like for full transparency and honesty. Whoa, transparency and honesty. What? What words even came out of my mouth right then? Anyway, um, I do have it written down on a list, so, because there's kind of a lot that I wanted to say, so I'm sorry if I pause a little bit. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is that the pens blend best when you either blend them together before adding any water, or you are, if you're going to blend them on top of another layer, you actually blend it while that layer is still damp. Um, I found that layering on top of already dried paint, already dried, I don't know what, marker, moisture, <laughs> um, already dry ink, that uh, the colors don't blend super well like you can definitely tell here like this pink and this like fleshy color are definitely not blended very well but when it was wet it looked blended which is a little bit of a strange um, characteristic of these markers is that even when it looks perfectly blended wet um, it will dry with harsh edges um, so uh, I unless you don't mind that look I wouldn't really suggest doing a whole lot of layers because also another thing that I found is that these um, colors re-wet um, very easily so I in my mind kind of characterize them as uh, so if gouache is if you think of gouache as a hybrid between acrylic and watercolors I think of these brush pens as a hybrid between watercolors and gouache in the sense that they perform kind of like watercolors, mostly like watercolors, um, and they are transparent like watercolors, but they re-wet very easily like gouache. So layering can be kind of difficult. Um, it does reactivate the layer underneath even if you are blending um, very lightly. So I think you can probably tell pretty easily um, in the the flower portion um okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right another issue that i had are did i i don't even know if i said this yet <laughs> kind of going off the script here um the harsh edges that you see all around here um are very very difficult to avoid um unless you use a lot a lot of water like these this area right here I did use a ton of water and definitely doesn't look as harsh as the rest but for some reason the pigment in the ink or the paint or whatever you want to call it um, as it dries it likes to kind of spread towards the edges and kind of concentrate there a little bit so it doesn't really um, act uh, in the exact same way as watercolors would where um, 
the pigment is mostly going to kind of stay where you put it um, but this pigment seems to like to travel to the edges for some reason so it's very difficult to avoid the harsh edges um, also another thing is when you are using these um, brushes straight from the brush right onto the paper um, and then you go put water on it they blend best when you use a lot of pigment um, so if you just do, you can probably see it here, um, and I think I mentioned it in the sped up portion, but you can still see the original like flower petals that I drew there. That's because that there wasn't a lot of pigment on the paper when I painted those, so those edges were very difficult to blend out. Um, but here there was a lot of pigment, and um, when I put water, they actually blended together very nicely. Um, Let's see. That is everything that I have to say about this portion, which most of it kind of applies to this, but I did paint all of this in a different way than this. So everything that, like this portion right here, this larger portion, was painted um, drawing, like coloring straight onto the paper from the pen and then using a water brush over it to blend. This portion down here, I decided to try to see if I could get the colors to um, blend a little bit easier and to try and eliminate some of the harsh edges. As you can see, that didn't really happen. Let's see. Um, you can see there's still quite a bit of harsh edges here. I actually think that some of the edges on here are actually a lot worse than when I used it straight from the brush pen. But all I did here was um, I took whatever color I wanted, I took a plastic paint palette, and I just scribbled onto one of the wells. Um, and then I added water and I mixed it and I used it just like I would a watercolor. Um, now, this method does make it a lot easier to create um, custom colors um, because you can put multiple colors in the same well. You can control how much pigment is going into it by how much you scribble onto it. And these brushes are quite juicy, as you can see. It wasn't very difficult for me to get a good amount of pigment in there. Um, so it's, this method does make it a lot easier to create um, the exact colors that you want. Also, it makes it a lot easier to control how much pigment you're actually painting with. Because like I said before, when you use it straight from the brush pen, you do have to put a lot of pigment on the paper in order for you to be able to blend out the original strokes so that they're um, they're not as visible or uh, basically gone. So um, if that's something that you're worried about, I would definitely suggest this, but this method did not help to eliminate the issue of the harsh edges. Um, and layering was still very very difficult. You can see here that these little like outline like flower petal outlines that I tried to put here um, I did not actually scrub the paper at all like my brush barely touched the paper because I had a lot of water on my brush um, and it lifted the pigment anyway just from the water sitting there and then created very harsh edges around um, the petals. And then on this, basically all I did was very lightly create little circles with some red pigment and it, yeah, super harsh edges. Um, here I tried to do some blending. Um, it lifted the original pigment and left a harsh edge. So <laughs> again, didn't really fix any of the issues I was trying to fix, but it did make creating my own colors so much easier and like I said uh, controlling how much pigment I was using. Now here um, I tried to do an example of watering it down and trying to blend it but as you can see this portion here I used so much water in here. This was basically all water and just like the tiniest amount of pigment and I tried to blend it out really well but as you can see, even that small amount of pigment still gravitated towards the edges. And as 
it's definitely not as harsh as this edge here but it's still noticeable it's not really a super big deal but it's definitely something to keep in mind um but this edge here is crazy because when i originally painted this and it was still wet that edge was not there at all like it did not look like that at all i don't know what it is about the pigment in this but it's just like magnetized to the edges or something it's weird um okay now that is kind of everything i had to say about it now i'm going to give you my final thoughts and here it is so i told you in the sped up portion the price of this uh the current list price of this the regular price as it is currently listed regular price not on sale is 86.63 currently it is on sale for 25.99 based on my experience with the performance of these brush pens i would not personally consider these um, professional grade or quality um they're kind of difficult to work with um and I, for those reasons, I would not, would not 100%, would not suggest purchasing these at full price. $90 for these, and this is for the 24 set. This is, this, they have another set that I think is like almost 100 brush pens, but this is just for the 24 sets, almost $90 regular price, which I think is kind of crazy, um, just based on the quality of this because that puts um the brush pens at almost four dollars a piece um which i personally don't really think that they're worth that now at the current sale price of 27 dollars absolutely i absolutely think they're worth that and i would even say that up to 30 depending on whether or not you're willing to pay it maybe 35 but i would say around the 30 range is probably what i think that these are worth um now from what i can tell arteza does have sales quite often so you can probably pick these up for a decent price um quite regularly so if you're going to purchase them i would definitely look out for their sales right now these are um listed as having um, free shipping available as well so definitely worth the sale price i would suggest these to somebody who either doesn't do any any layering in their watercolor pieces um or somebody who doesn't mind the harsh edges or the look of that um or somebody who's using them for art journaling or uh, just like uh, any kind of hobbyist somebody who's just using it in like journals or scrapbooks or something that's not meant to be a professional piece that's going to be sold or somebody who's just looking to experiment with something new that's kind of like something that they're already interested in but um, might, pr might provide them a new challenge just it has a little bit of a learning curve because it, they don't perform exactly like watercolors. Actually, I've never used anything like these. I've used a couple other brush pens before, but they performed more like watercolors than these do. So these are quite unique in my mind. Um, and I know that everything that I said about these can kind of be construed in a negative way, but in my personal opinion, they're only negatives if you are thinking of these as I mean they are marketed as watercolor brush pens but in my mind that's not fully accurate if you're thinking them thinking of them as watercolor brush pens I feel like they don't perform enough like watercolors to me to really be called that I don't know but I did actually really enjoy working with them I thought they were really fun and they do give kind of like a harsh look but I really don't mind that honestly depending on what I'm doing and I mean they're fun so <laughs> I mean why does it matter I don't plan on selling anything that I create with it um 
it's just for myself so if I'm having fun with it then that's what matters to me um so yeah I mean it, it's definitely up to you you have to make your own mind make up your own mind on whether or not you think that these are something you'd be interested in um everybody has different wants and needs in their art products so something to keep in mind everything I told you is just based on my experiences everyone's gonna have different experiences so just keep that in mind um, but my experience was not negative I just wanted to say that I'm just giving you all the facts anyway um, uh, thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it I know that this video is <laughs> quite a bit different than anything I've done before. It's even more different than the gouache one that I did before because this actually doesn't involve stickers. Now eventually, um, once I get a hang of using these and can figure them out a little bit more, I might end up hand painting um, some things to create into stickers, but I will have to practice with them a little bit more. Um, but if these are something that you're interested in, uh, the description box down below will have a link to the Arteza site overall, a link to the 24 set of watercolor brush pens or real brush pens, and to the Arteza 24 set of gouache. Those links are all affiliate links, so if you purchase through them, I will receive a small, um, a small amount of the sale, I guess I could say. Um, but it doesn't cost you any more to purchase through those links than it would to purchase just by like googling the site. But if that's something you're uncomfortable with, I completely understand. However, anything that I earn through those affiliate links will go straight back into my channel uh, in order for me to create more content for you guys. So anyway, thank you so much for watching again. Uh, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you'd like to see more um, videos like this, I am going to be making one more video with these brush pens. Uh, it's actually going to be a plan with me video and it's going to be really cool, I think. <laughs> I really hope so. I really hope it works out the way that I'm thinking because if it does, it's going to be super cool. Anyway, um, go ahead and subscribe also if you haven't already and you want to see more arty, plenary, crafty goodness. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!